Okay, let me know if you're not able to see my PowerPoint slides here. Okay, now just recap what, what we have covered for chapter four uh, or before uh, lecture uh, before this. So for chapter four, you always need to recall this uh, formula, uh, Renox number, or uh, is very relevant to your report number two. Uh. Renox number equal to rho VD divided by mu. So rho is the density, uh, v, is a, v hat is a mean velocity and diameter of the pipe divided by mu. So later on, we will introduce you what happens if you are using a rectangular tube uh, rather than a cylindrical tube. So what happened to this dimension, right? So we will we, there is a formula to calculate the D uh, later on. But at this moment, we assume that we are using a round tube, a cylindrical tube. So we use Reynolds number equal to rho VD divided by mu. So again, this formula is very important for chapter four. And there's a magic number that uh, we need to always remember, which is 2300, zero, zero, uh, 2300. Zero, zero. If your Reynolds number is less than 2300, zero, zero, you are having a laminar flow. So if your Reynolds number is more than 2300, zero, zero, means that we can assume that it is having a turbulent flow. So this is just a, a gauge number where it will help you to identify uh, whether you are having a laminar scenario or turbulent scenario. Yeah. So this is just a guide, uh, uh, a reference uh, number for you to, to do. Eh? So uh, yeah, this number is for um, is for water, if not mistaken. Yeah. So if you you take this one and then divide it by the mu of the water, then you will get whether you are in laminar or turbulent. Then after that, um, there is also another formula for laminar, which is if the ratio, if is if the question given you the ratio of L over D and it tell you that the scenario is laminar, then you need to recall this uh, equation. L over D equal to 0 0.06 your Reynolds number, rho VD divided by mu. So from there, you know your Reynolds number or you can calculate the other parameter, right? So this, this equation is the L over D ratio and 0.6 Reynolds number. So from here, you can calculate your Reynolds number uh, if you're given the ratio, uh, the ratio of your L over D, okay. So uh, and also uh, just to highlight is that you should able to answer this question. What is the entrance length if the flow is laminar? So if you look at this diagram, if you're asked to calculate the entrance length to uh, before your flow get a fully developed uh, velocity profile. Uh, what is the length? So by using this equation, L over D equal to 0 0.6 your Reynolds number. So what is the value of Reynolds number when you have a laminar flow? Uh, cool, this question is for you. What is the Reynolds number if you're having a laminar flow? What is the magic number that I asked you to memorize? Who are you there? Yeah. Yeah. What is the what is the Renox number that I asked you to memorize for chapter four? The the one the number that you can differentiate whether it's laminar or turbulent. What is the magic number? What is the 4D number? Oliver, what is the magic number that asks you to memorize for chapter four? Reynolds number? Was it 2000? Very near to that number. Uh, Not 2000. Uh, so is there 2300? Yeah, correct. The magic number is 2300. So 
if you're having a lamina, does it more than 2300 or less? Cool. Uh, less. Okay, less. Huh? So it means that you will replace uh, L over D equal to 0 0.06, rho VD divided by mu. The rho VD divided by mu is Reynolds number. So what you do, you replace 0 0.06 times 2300. What you do get? Uh, cool. What's the number you get? You take 0 0.06 times 2300. What number you get? Uh, what well, again? Answer this question. What is the entrance length if the flow is laminar? So what is the number that you should replace over here if it's laminar? Uh, one three eight is it? So two three zero zero times zero point zero six, you get one three eight what? One three eight, yeah. Or oh, this side is one three eight, but the question it asks you what is the entrance length? So put your answer in term of d. So how many? L equal to how many d? Cool, you understand what I'm asking? No worries, sure. Okay, in blue line, what is the entrance length if the flow is laminar? Put your answer in term of diameter. You look, look at this diagram. Where is your entrance length? Your entrance length is here. Your entrance length is L. Put your answer in terms of how many how many times of diameter your length should be if you want to get laminar flow. Just now, uh, the zero point zero six times three uh, two thousand three hundred is one three eight. Yeah, this size one three eight. So the yeah. length should be how many times of D? One three eight D. Yes, correct. The answer for this blue line question is 138D. Meaning, the maximum length, the maximum entrance length that you can go before you lose it to turbulence will be 138 times of your diameter. If you get, let's say your length is 1 meter. Right. Let's say your sorry. Let's say let's say your diameter is uh, one meter. Okay. So the length will be 138 meter before it turn into turbulent. Okay. If the length is more than 138 meter, let's say your D is one meter. If your length is more than 138 meter your flow is going to change into turbulent flow. Any number less than 138 meter, your flow is going to be laminar. You understand, cool? Yes, sir. All right, good. Right, the next one is that um, a concept for chapter four is that, that this question, the flow between two parallel plates uh, how would this uh, flow take place? Means that if you have a two pair of plates, how, how will the flow happening? There are three scenarios. First, there will be a difference pressure between two points. So meaning, if I, if I use this diagram. So there are three cases the, the flow will flow from left to right. The first scenario is the difference of pressure. The second one is that you're moving the plate, either this plate, top or bottom, the flow will move, or you are you are having a gravity uh, gravity flow where this uh, tube is in the horizontal position, or there's a 
there's a change of uh, your H eleva elevation, then your flow will flow from high point to low point. Okay, these are the concepts that you must have uh, when you study chapter four. Yeah, Reynolds number, uh, magic number 2300, and the L over D ratio, this one. And then the, the mechanism that make the flow flowing, pressure, uh, moving plate, and also the gravity. So these three factor that we will consider in our calculation. Okay, so these are what we study before this. And we also derive one formula, a few formula, not one, a few formula from this diagram alone. And this diagram is developed based on both plates are stationary, where we assume that we have a flow between two plates and these two plates are not moving. And we're having all these parameter. And during our derivation, recall that we have two reference axes. One is your y and x, the normal y and x here and the one with the y prime and x prime which is in the middle of the tube or middle of the plate okay remind yourself when we derive equation we are using two axes here one is from the wall which is bottom wall or bottom plate y and x one is from the middle of the plate with the y prime x prime so Another concept you should recall is that we, all, we will always get maximum velocity at the middle of the plate, and also there's no velocity when your flow is touching or in contact with the wall because of the friction and also viscosity effect of the fluid. All right, so these are the basic fundamental concept before you start to look into the formula. All right. Then uh, these are the boundary condition and why we need to mention boundary condition because in the derivation we have a constant value it is your c1 and c2 so go back uh, into all these derivation steps in my sl previous slides eh? so in our derivation there is a c1 and c2 in our calculation so c1 and c2 here Okay, uh, so we go back to the previous slides. Huh? If this one you 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 not able to, you don't understand what 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 is it when I mentioned about C one and C two. Okay, so you need all these boundary condition for you to find the value of your C one and C two, and then you substitute it back. At the end, you arrive at velocity profile, which is I highlight highlight inside the box here. So previous lecture, we stopped at these two equations. Yeah, so these two equations uh, will be very important for chapter four. You have two form of velocity profile. So uh, usually we'll use the bottom one. We we'll use the second one. In terms of A, mu, the pressure differences, or dp over ds, and y over A, again, y here, is from the wall bottom there all right so if you see y prime then there's another equation already yeah we are using the axis that at the bottom of the plate just now all right let's continue from this one so let's pick up from the previous lecture so today we're going to learn a few more equation and then we look at one uh, tutorial question all right so Remember, we pick up from here, uh, velocity profile, u equal to this uh, equation. All right, so let's look at how do we use the u link up with the flow rate q. q equal to v times a, velocity times the cross section area, you get the Brom flow rate, q equal to va. So if we modify a little bit this integration uh, relationship, we change the A in terms of L and dy. Yeah? 
So we change the the A with L and the Y, you get your A. Yeah. Again, uh, you change your cross section area to L times the Y, you get area. You replace your velocity with the equation that we see just now, that we saw just now. In this equation, you integrate with 0 to A, right? So why we have 0 to A, you need to go back this diagram again. This diagram again we have a uh, two axes uh, one is y x one is y prime x prime since we are using the bottom plate as our reference so our a is from zero to a bottom plate to upper plate here zero zero to a here okay right So just now I'm explaining why we are using 0 to A. Then after that, you substitute the velocity profile equation into this integration, and then you do the integration, yeah? You do the integration. It's a very lengthy process, but it's just an application of your integration skill. So you're integrating the Y component so anything that inside y, this one will become, when you integrate y square, you'll get y cubed divided by 3. This one, you'll get y square divided by 2. And then after that, you substitute from 0 to a, you get the following terms, right? Okay, now before that, um, we put our velocity uh, flow rate in terms of depth, in terms of uh, L, eh? in terms of L, right? In terms of L, so your Q divided by L, you get this integration uh, relationship. So you can define the velocity flow rate from the velocity profile just now in terms of flow rate per unit depth. L in this term. After you integrate from the second equation that you see on the screen here, after you integrate, you arrive at 1 over 12 mu, the pressure differences times the A cube. Right? So this is the equation for today. Q divided by L is the flow rate per unit depth equal to negative, we have start seeing negative sign there already. So when you use this equation, remember to use or remember to carry forward the negative in your calculation. Negative 1 over 12 mu, pressure differences, dp over ds, dx times a cubed. All right, then what happens if you want to write our flow rate as a function of uh, um, pressure drop? Yeah. What happens if I want to modify this equation? Q divided by L equal to negative 1 over 12 mu dp over dx a cube. So we know that dp dx is constant in our pipe, which means that our pressure we can write as dp over dx equal pressure at point 0.2 minus pressure at point 0.1 divided by your L because your X is your length. The X is your length. So we can write negative del P divided by L. Okay, we have a negative del P over L in this case because when we take Pressure 2 minus pressure 1, we will get a negative pressure. Again, you should ask yourself why we get a negative sign. All right. 
back to the three scenario. Why your flow can flow in a pipe? It is because the change of pressure. First scenario. All right. Now, if you have two points, point one and point two. Oliver, are you there? Yeah. yeah. So if you look at this diagram that I just draw, if your flow is flowing from the left to right, P1 or P2 is higher. Which one is higher? Pressure at point one is higher or pressure at point two is higher when your flow is flowing from left to right. Is it pressure one? Pressure one is higher. The answer is pressure one is higher. Correct? Yeah, yeah, I said pressure one. Think yeah. pressure one. Yeah. So correct. So pressure one is more than pressure two. Let's say we put in a value. Let's say we have a hundred kilopascal and P2 should not more than hundred kilopascal, let's say we only have 50 kilopascal here. So the flow will flow from high point to low point, high pressure to low pressure. So if you do the mathematics calculation by using a linear relationship, when you take P2 minus P1, because P2 is less than P1, you will get a negative sign in your calculation. Clear, yeah, everyone? Any question? Anyone, you still don't get it? Why you have a negative sign here? No, clear now. Yeah, all right. Let's continue. So you substitute your dp dx with a differential delta p divided by l into here. So from here, you see two negative signs we can cancel out you will get a positive equation in term of delta p all right so if your equation is negative sign you are looking at differences of pressure dp over dx if your equation is positive sign you are looking at delta p sign or delta p term Right, and it is in terms of uh, um, yeah. Okay, so this is the differences when you need to be careful. Why why some case you need to use negative for volume flow rate? Why some case you don't need? It's because the content for the volume flow rate. If you negative, then inside the equation is dp over dx. If you want to use a positive sign, meaning you take the point two minus point one, meaning the changes of pressure between two points, then you get a positive sign for for for. Okay, so this slide will explain huh? why one equation, one case there is a negative sign, one case it is a positive sign. So mathematically, if you understand or make sense then you're able to answer uh, lots of the concept uh, question. So we have two equations for volume flow rate. Eh? One is with the negative, the PDX, one in terms of pressure, uh, differences pressure, delta P, with positive sign. All right, then the next one we need to answer, uh, can we derive um, our average velocity right, from our volume flow rate just now? So, um, velocity equal to Q divided by A. So, if you want to get an average, then we will uh, consider the scenario we have. We will change the cross section area with LA. So, we know that from uh, the above equation here, our equation uh, above is Q divided by L. So, you substitute. Either these two depend on the scenario you have. So if you're using a negative sign, 
then you have a negative 1 over 12 mu dp dx a cubed times the uh, times the the term that you have over here then you arrive at 1 over 12 mu dp over dx a squared All right, you can see uh, why suddenly there's an L here because you move your you move your L to right hand side. So and then you carry forward the equation L over A in here. So this one is Q divided by L A. Then you simplify, you get negative one over twelve mu pdx a squared so you have average velocity equation already okay so recall what are the important equation you have velocity profile u equal to this one there are two forms eh? so um, you can write either one um, from velocity profile itself you can find the maximum velocity value so what you write is that you write in terms of du over dy. You rearrange this equation. You write in du over dy equal to a squared divided by 2 mu dp dx. And you factor out this term from the equation above. 2y divided by a squared minus 1 over a. Right? So, all right. Now, back to your concept of your quadratic curve. Y equal y x. Eh? Y a x square plus b x plus c is a quadratic curve. So you want to get the maximum peak point of this curve. What do you do? You differentiate dy over dx equals zero. You get the peak point of your y. At, the, at this point, there's no gradient at this, uh, the gradient equal to zero at this peak point. You apply the same for this concept. You take the u dy over this case, and then you put the u dy equals zero, you get a maximum velocity. So this concept is important when you want to get maximum value for an equation. So you rewrite the velocity profile equation. You write as du dy equal to the remaining content. After you rearrange, then you put du dy equals zero. You will get if this one equals zero, this side equals zero, you arrive at y equal to a divided by two. If you this side zero, you arrive, you answer y equal to a divided by two. So since this is y and not y prime so again back to the two axes that i mentioned just now if you are referring to y it means you're starting from the bottom plate going up is here if your y equal to a divided by two it means you are at the center of the plate two plate here and the velocity here is u max at the center plate here by looking at the mathematic model that you just derived. Okay. So we can rewrite the equation. So this is the boundary condition that you have when your y equal to a divided by 2, which is at the center of the pipe measuring from the bottom of the plate, or your reference axis yx here, your u will equal to u max. So if you substitute, if you substitute this boundary condition into your velocity profile equation, u equal to u max, your y equal to a divided by two. So you substitute this y equal to a divided by two here. Also you substitute this y equal to a divided by two. You simplify the equation by using this boundary condition. You arrive at when your u max at the center of the pipe you can write in this equation equal to negative 1 over 2 mu 
the pressure differences or dp over dx a square. So this is the equation that you use when you want to find the velocity at the center of the pipe or your u max. This is the equation that you use. Right? Or you can write, it's actually because we already derived the velocity, mean velocity just now, the average velocity equation, which is equal to negative 1 over 12 mu dp dx a square. You look at the term of equation that you have in these slides, this term. You convert, you rewrite this equation in terms of average velocity. You rearrange the equation, eh? so the step is a bit lengthy or uh, the mathematics step, there are two or three steps to simplify the equation. So you can write your Umax actually is equal to 3 over 2 V min. Eh? V min. Right? You compare this equation with this equation. You substitute this equation here. This equation. So you will get 3 over 2 V hat, which is the mean velocity. It means that if you're, if you're given the mean velocity, let's say you're given in a zema, if you're given the mean velocity in the pipe or in the plate, between the plate is 100 meter per second. So straight away, you substitute into this equation. You arrive, you can straight away Assuming you are having a laminar flow, eh? so you are having your U max equal three divided by two v max uh, v min. So you will get uh, three divided by one point five times uh, hundred will be get one five zero meter per second at the middle of the pipe. Does it make sense? Any question? Any question from uh, all of you? No. No. no but no, uh, So you should able to understand why if the question saying that if you are given the mean velocity equal to 100, straight away you can say that uh, the U max value is 150 meter per second from this equation. Yeah, you should able to understand that. Right? Uh, why suddenly I can say the U max at the center of two plate will be equal to 150 meter per second. Okay, by using this um, equation, eh? and this equation apply when we have both both plate are stationary. When the the both the both plate doesn't move, only fall under the condition where there's a difference of pressure from left to right. Okay, then we can use this equation. All right. So these are the transformation of equation there. So if you look at this diagram, um, you having a y axis is actually from uh, represent the y hat or y prime divided by a. Y prime divided by a is a dimensionless dimension. Yeah? What does it mean? Your y prime is in the unit of meter. Your a is the dist distance from uh, bottom. Also in meter, so we cancel meter with meter. There's dimensionless time meter, but it's a ratio between y prime over a. So at the center is zero. At the wall here is positive sign, half. At the middle here is negative half. All right. So to look at this graph, you should you should understand what is y prime, what is a. Yeah? So in this diagram, it's given you some hints there. Y is from bottom, y prime is from the middle of the pipe. Okay. So if your your a at the middle here is zero, because your y prime is zero. So if your y prime move up, you get a half there because on here, 
here, your y prime is a divided by 2. So you substitute y prime in this equation, a divided by 2 divided by a, you get half. If you y prime, you go down, you get a negative here. Here, y prime equal to negative a divided by 2. So if you take your y prime, substitute into this equation, divided by a, you get a negative half here. It's a dimensionless uh, axis, yeah? So I already explained about the y-axis. X-axis, you take your u divided by u max. And you can substitute the equation that we derived just now. What is u max? a squared divided by 8 mu and dp dx. And you plot the graph, you will get uh, this profile. You will get a parabolic profile with a maximum value at the center. OK, so if you excel the plot, the value, you'll get maximum velocity at this area. So on this slide, you will see I give you the velocity profile equation, u equal to a squared, 2 mu, dp dx, and the ratio of your y and a. So if you take at the center of the pipe or center of the channel, um, then when you, sub when you transform the above equation into y prime, you have uh, two different equations over here. Okay, the equation on the top is referring to this axis, which is referring to y and x axis. Equation number two is referring to y prime axis. Okay, take note now. And how do we transform? We just substitute your y equal to, you substitute what you have here, your y equal to uh, y prime plus a divided by two. Okay. Then you will get this equation, y prime divided by a square minus one over four for this term. So there are two equations on the screen here you should be able to identify which one to use when you are referring to different axes. If you are referring to axis at the bottom, you use this equation. If you are referring to this axis at the middle, or y prime, then you use this equation. The content is different, so take note on this one. So when you come to your exam, don't confuse between the first one and the second one. Don't use the wrong one, yeah? All right, let's look at uh, one example. You guys need rest? You guys need rest? Or you can just uh, go forward? You can go forward. Yeah, yeah. continue. Continue, uh, then after this, we uh, call it a day. Yeah. All right, so we look, look at this example. So this one, actually, if you download the tutorial question, this one is uh, in tutorial question number 11, yeah? All right, so what do we have in this question? We have a hydraulic system operate at a pressure gauge of 20 megapascal. So at this case, you should know when you look at the mega, you should know uh, it's 10 power 6 uh, behind the 20. Yeah? And then the temperature is 55 Celsius. You are using SAE, uh, 10W oil or lubricant oil, SAE uh, category uh, for this uh, system. If you look at this system, uh, there's a two moving, uh, uh, not two moving, but there's a two, two wall there. One is in the middle with uh, diameter 25 mm, and then there's a distance of uh, 0.005 mm uh, with the outer wall there. Um, so what, what do we need to determine? The question asks us to calculate the leakage flow rate uh, or the Q. Uh, the flow rate is Q. If the pressure uh, gauge there at the low pressure side of the piston is one megapascal. So you are given uh, two differences pressure 
one at the top is 20 megapascal. If you look at the diagram below there, at the right, right bottom uh, corner, P1 equal to 20 megapascal at the top there, and there's a low pressure at the bottom there. P2 equal to 10 megapascal. Both pressure are gauge pressure. Yeah, so uh, make sure you understand what is gauge pressure, what is absolute pressure, what is atmospheric pressure. All right, so how do we solve this one? So before we start, we need to identify which category of question we are having here. So because the gap is very small, the gap is 0 0.005 mm between two wall, then we can model the scenario as two parallel plates and there's a flow moving uh, between the two plates, okay? which is a scenario that we have there. And then recall the Q equation, Q divided by L equal to A cubed delta P divided by 12 mu L. And take note, when you use the delta P, there's no longer negative in front. If you want to use a negative one, then you, then you are seeing dP over dx in the equation. There are two types of dQ over L, yeah? So take note on the equation. And these are the assumptions. So the first one is laminar flow, steady flow, incompressible flow, and we have a fully developed flow. Remember that uh, we have uh, one equation that tell us the ratio of uh, the length that we have, yeah? So we have uh, L divided by A, which is uh, 3,000, yeah? So 3,000 is uh, quite a large uh, area, yeah? So L divided by A, if you take the, the length times the L, 15 mm divided by A, you will get the ratio is very high. Yeah? Okay, the next step is that you take the Q divided by L equation. You rearrange because you want to find the Q. So you re rearrange the equation, you pull the L to right hand side. You will get Q divided by L times something. And after that, uh, we approximate our L as ID which is a circumference of our plate here. So we assume that the inner circle of diameter 25 equivalent to a plate, a bottom plate, right? So we are simulating two plate there. So we are assuming that this is your L, right? So how do you find the circumference of a circle? 2 pi r or 2 r is d, so you get pi d. Okay. Right. Then continue with the development of your equation. So you will get L in term of pi d. Yeah. After that, you need to refer to Empedix A for this uh, SAE 10W oil uh, parameter or characteristic parameter. So you have to know uh, where is Appendix A. You should download it already from Moodle. You should refer to figure A.2. If you're not sure where it is, it's under. You should already have uh, this Appendix. Uh. So under here, there's a graph there. So you should already have uh, familiar with this appendix. There's one graph, A2 and A3. Don't confuse between these two. A3, uh, A.2 is for dynamic viscosity. A3 is kinematic viscosity. So don't confuse between what is kinematic? If you look at the axis here, kinematic is uh, italic V. 
A2 is absolute viscosity with a mu there. So this viscosity is what we use for Reynolds number. Rho Vd divided by mu. This is the dynamic viscosity that we are using for Reynolds number derivation or in all the equation that we use. In this equation, Q equal to something divided by 12 mu L. So this mu, we are referring to features A dot this one yeah so don't confuse between these two graph so uh, student usually uh, when come to exam confused they use the wrong number and they get the wrong answer so if you refer to if you download this document and uh, you refer to the temperature and you project up you move to the left you get the value that you should use for the question so there are a few lines there. You have SAE 30, uh, 10W, oil, and dash 30 there. So when it come to exam, be careful to differentiate and all this code, huh? this, all, this time, uh, all this material code there. All right. Uh, any question on this graph? No, it's quite, quite direct. Huh? Uh, how to use this one quite direct. Huh? You project up and move to the left. Or maybe sometimes it move from the left to right if you want to find temperature. All right, quite direct. Eh? So um, be careful. And the unit here also need to take note. Eh? The unit of your dynamic viscosity is Newton dot second divided by meter square. All right, so I think uh, it's enough for the explanation for Appendix A. So you'll get from the temperature 55 degrees C you'll get roughly uh, 0 0.018 kilogram over a meter second. Uh, it should be in Newton, yeah, sorry. Right, so the unit here I'm using is a bit wrong. So it should be Newton dot second over meter square. But if you convert into kilogram, it's, it's correct. Huh? So you can use Newton dot second over meter square Okay, use in the unit of kilogram. All right, see. All right, then after that, it just uh, substitute the answer in the question. So pi 12 times, uh, this one is, uh, D is, I should not have zero there. Huh? So uh, my recommendation is that uh, you always change your unit into unit SI. Huh? So this one just uh, illustration of conversion of unit. Huh? All right, so um, you just substitute and then be careful on the unit. Uh, delta P it means you take the P2 minus P, uh, no, P, P, P1 minus P2, yeah, 20 minus one, all right, 20 minus one. Uh, okay, yeah. be careful um, on Delta P. Delta P will focus on the magnitude of the differences, yeah, rather than the, the previous equation. There's one equation with a negative one. Then this one, if you if you are using delta P, it doesn't matter which one you you take. We only different only interested in the magnitude of different. So in this case, we take 20 minus one, right? Even you take one minus 20, but remember to switch it into positive value. Okay, then you'll get Q equal to 56.57.6 mm per cube, or you can put it in a meter square, meter cube. All right, in SM, um, normally our request for meter cube per second. All right, then the next one will be um, just checking. Uh, this one is just an extension, and maybe you will be in your final exam also. Um, just to Explain whether you are using the correct equation for laminar flow. Uh, just to check on the Reynolds number. So how do we check Reynolds number? Uh, v divided V um, average velocity equal to Q divided by A. So we just do the calculation. The velocity mean velocity is 0.176 meter per second. And if you do the calculation for Reynolds number. Reynolds number equal to rho VA or rho VD divided by mu. 
So you substitute, you need to convert the velocity, uh, the density of the fluid because we are not using water. We are we are looking at uh, a lubricant oil, which is you need to look at the SG for lubricant oil, SG times the rho of the water. Yeah. So again, for appendix A, there's a specific gravity for SAE 10W oil, table A.2. So where, where to get this A? It's inside here. Okay, so inside appendix two, table A2, there's a specific gravity there. So there is a SAE 10W oil, 0 0.92. Of course, uh, in tutorial or in a lecture, we give you SAE 10W oil already. We will not ask you this type of uh, fluid, but we will use other material in the question. All right? So you need to know how to use Appendix uh, uh, A to help you to find uh, what happened if I ask, uh, I put lubricant, lubricating oil in your question. Uh, then you should use the correct number for static uh, gravity. All right. So the viscosity water also given here already. So uh, you should know what is the value. So uh, from the calculation of Reynolds number by using the conversion of SG times the rho water, uh, you will get Reynolds number is 0.3, which is less than 2300 then we confirm that the flow inside this system is laminar flow. So these are the steps to show that you understand what is laminar flow by using Reynolds number. Okay. Or in exam, if you write Reynolds number less than 2300, you get laminar. If you write something like this in your answer, you'll get marks for that one. All right, so I think uh, next lecture, we will look at what happens if you have a moving plate. Currently, we have a non-moving plate. Two plates are not moving, but there's a pressure difference between two points uh, between the pipe there. Okay, let me stop the recording.